Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna be doing a very exciting video because I've recently hit a milestone in my YouTube journey because as of December 10th, I've been officially doing YouTube full-time for two years now and so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to kind of do a Q&A talking about how YouTube has been going for me so far doing this full-time. I actually did do a Q&A when it was like six months of doing YouTube full-time so I'll have that link down below if you missed that but I thought it would be nice to do an updated version of that video because a lot has changed in the last two years. I mean, if you were wondering, I've been doing YouTube since 2015, so I'm gonna actually have my nine-year YouTube anniversary coming up in February next year. So this isn't my, like, two-year anniversary of being on YouTube. This is just my two-year anniversary of doing YouTube full-time. And the fact that I've even been able to do YouTube full-time for the last two years is such a privilege, and there's not a second that I take any of this for granted. I am so freaking grateful to anybody who takes the time out of their day to watch my videos, to interact with me online, to engage with my content. It literally means the world to me and I don't know how to thank you enough for your support. It really has made such a difference in my life and I am eternally grateful. But I just thought it would be fun to do a Q&A. I did ask for some questions over on my Instagram and I got some really awesome questions. But before we do jump into the Q&A part of this video, I do have a very exciting announcement and that is that my first Trova trip has been approved and we're ready to go. In one of my last videos, I was talking about the possibility of me potentially hosting my first ever Trova trip and now it's actually happening and you can book the trip now. And so I'm so excited to let you know that for my first Trova trip, we're going to be going to Italy and it's specifically going to be the coastal cities in Italy, which I am so excited about. It's going to be happening next year from October 13th through the 19th. It's a seven day week long trip, which I think is perfect. I think that's the sweet spot. I am so excited for this trip because it's not only going to be, you know, my first time going to Italy. I've never been to Italy. I think it's going to be so amazing to get this experience to go, but also because I get to travel with some of you potentially. Like just the idea of all of us going to Italy together and like being on the beach and doing some book shopping and like, oh my gosh, I can't even, like it's going to be so great. So I do have the link down in the description if you want to go and check it out. The full itinerary is posted. We have nine activities included in our itinerary as well as like six breakfasts and two dinners are included with the price of the trip. That price for the trip covers pretty much everything. It covers the hotel, it covers some of the food, it covers like the airport transfers and all the city transfers, and it covers the fact that we're gonna get a local guide with us. The only thing that the price does not cover is the flights and like the travel insurance or like tips for guides and things like that, but everything else is pretty much covered for the most part, which is amazing. I did everything within my power to get this price as low as I could, and I'm really excited to let you know too that the first 12 people to sign up will get the early bird access, which will save you about $100, which is pretty cool. So the first 12 people will get that. We have 24 spots total. After 24 people have signed up, the trip will be completely sold out. So if you're thinking about it, if you're interested, definitely check out my link down below. I am so excited. I can't believe that I'll be going to Italy for the first time next year. And the fact that I could be going with some of you just makes my heart like pitter patter. Like I am so excited for this. If you're thinking about joining, but you're not totally sure you have any questions, you can feel free to message me on Instagram. Like just send me a DM with any questions that you have and I'd be happy to help answer them. All right, so the first questions that I thought I would answer for this are kind of related to like financial things. One of the questions is from my friend Sid. She said, at what sub count did you make the jump to do full time and do you do anything on the side? And then also Susan asked, how long did it take for you to become monetized? And so the funny thing is that when I started my channel, I actually didn't even really know about monetization on YouTube. And I actually didn't even monetize my channel until 2018 when I had around 7,000 subscribers. So I had been on YouTube for three years at the beginning without getting paid a single dime because I had no idea that that was even a thing. Because when I started my YouTube channel, I never had the idea in mind that I would be doing this as a way to like make money or to get paid eventually. Like that was never even crossed my mind. I literally just started this YouTube channel as like a hobby. But when I did end up quitting my job at the end of 2021, at the time that I quit my job, I had around like 65,000 subscribers, I think. Like not that that really matters, but that's when I decided to take the jump. And at the time I had only decided to take the jump of like actually leaving my job because I had been earning steady income from YouTube for about two years. It's wild too because looking back on it, at the time that I had quit my job, I didn't even have my Patreon yet. Like the main way that I was making money through YouTube at that time was just through AdSense on YouTube and then through sponsors and things like that. So it's really wild like looking back that I actually quit my job before I even had my Patreon because I actually launched my Patreon like two or three weeks after I quit my job because it was like I finally had the time to dedicate to a Patreon, you know, because Patreon is actually a lot of work. It's basically a second full-time job. I've 
I'm sure that anybody that has a Patreon would confirm this because it's like you see all the stuff that I'm doing for YouTube and it's already a lot of work but then when you think about all the stuff that's going into Patreon like I do weekly reading sprints on Patreon and most of those last like three to four hours long at the minimum and then I'm also hosting like movie nights over there I do troop talks with my sister like there's a lot of live shows and time that goes into those live shows but then I also do a lot of extra content for Patreon like I'm always doing at least one exclusive extra video per month I do a lot of planning over there for like the book troop for my book club and just like a lot of planning in general like there's so much time that goes into planning every single month of content and especially extra content for my Patreon too and so all of that to say I'm just really surprised that I at the time that I quit my job without having that safety net of Patreon because now I don't know if I would be able to do this without the help of my Patreon and then continuing with the conversation of like finances and questions related to that I got a lot of questions that were like was it difficult to adapt to not having a steady paycheck and then what do you feel comfortable sharing about your finances how much do you get paid do you make enough as if you're doing a 40-hour job I think at first it was definitely a weird adjustment to get used to not having like the typical like you know paychecks every two weeks kind of thing I mean if you didn't know if you're newer to my channel you might not know but I actually used to be a restaurant manager like that was my job I worked at a pizza restaurant and I was a restaurant manager for about like three years and then at the very end in 2021 I ended up stepping down to assistant manager so that I could put more hours into my YouTube channel and work a little bit less hours in the restaurant and so for that last year in 2021 I was only working about 25 hours in the restaurant and working as an assistant manager and that job was really intense and it was very it was a lot of stress especially because I was mostly the manager during the pandemic years there for a bit but it was a little bit of an adjustment getting used to like not having the steady paychecks especially at the beginning but after the year of 2022 I actually set it all up so that my YouTube brand is basically a business now so what that means is that I've set it up so that like Gabby Reads is like an LLC and so I can put all of the money from my business into the same bank account and then I pay myself like I'm an employee of my business so it's really nice now because I do actually get the steady paychecks because I'm able to pay myself twice a month I feel like 2022 in that year like that first year of me doing YouTube full-time I learned so much about the business side of things I had to like hire an accountant you know like I have a payroll specialist I have people that are helping me figure this shit out I also you know at the very end of 2022 I actually signed on to Table Rock Management so I do have management now which is basically someone who helps me get sponsors and things like that so that's also been a really cool process and there's been a lot more going on with like the business side of YouTube than I ever could have imagined like it was definitely a learning curve like there was a lot of learning that I did last year especially when it comes to taxes and like just learning all of the financial things learning how to budget doing all of these things it's been a very intense learning curve and I feel like I've learned a lot very quickly but with all of that being said yes I do make enough as if I was doing a regular 40-hour job which I'm very grateful for I'm actually making more working for myself than I did in the restaurant because in the restaurant I was still an hourly employee like I was paid hourly even though I was the you know restaurant manager and on top of that like I wasn't getting benefits as the restaurant manager so it's like even those things like health insurance or any reason that you might you know have a reason to stay at a job I wasn't getting those things offered to me through my job so I've still been paying for health insurance out of my own pocket I think with YouTube for me the hardest part has been the YouTube AdSense specifically which is how you get paid from YouTube that has been the most intense for me to like navigate because that has I've seen the most fluctuation with that through the years like some years it'll be really good and some years like I'll have some months that earn really high for some reason and then some years like this last year it's been a little bit lower than normal and it's hard to know if certain things have gone into that I mean most of the time I think the biggest things that are impacting your AdSense would be how many videos you're uploading per month and then how much engagement you're getting on those videos like how many views they're getting how many you know likes or comments they're getting and so I know those definitely play a factor into that but I also think there's a lot of like uncontrollable things that go into YouTube AdSense that I don't fully understand and so I think that's been the hardest part for me with doing YouTube full-time lately is I never really know how much money I'm gonna make through AdSense every month it can be completely random I've been really lucky enough that the most consistent things for me income wise is definitely patreon and that sponsors have been pretty consistent for me which I'm so grateful for I don't know if it'll always be this way for me on YouTube but for right now that's how it is and I'm so grateful for that all right so the next questions were all kind of related to advice like I got questions tips for getting started and growing an audience what's the best advice for someone wanting to do YouTube full-time and like how important is it to post often how to grow your channel I think my biggest advice to anybody who's thinking about starting a YouTube channel would be to do it because you love it and because it's something you want to do and not for like views or popularity or money opportunities because I feel like those things if they come that's exciting and that's amazing 
amazing and that's just a bonus of getting to do this but I also think at the end of the day you're gonna be very disappointed if your channel doesn't grow as fast as you think it will and I think it's important to keep expectations like realistic at least for somebody like me it took me five years on YouTube before I ever saw any real growth on my channel like it was a very slow five years at the beginning but I think YouTube can become miserable very fast if you're just like waiting for those numbers to increase if you're just constantly doing everything you can to make your numbers higher and you get too focused on the numbers I think YouTube can become so miserable very quickly I also think one of my best pieces of advice for like getting started on YouTube is to practice talking in front of your camera as much as you can I think getting comfortable talking to a camera is very important because it's not natural you know it's not normal to be able to talk to a camera and at first like definitely if you see some of my first videos you will see how awkward I was it's definitely something you have to keep practicing keep getting better at until you're talking to the camera just like you're talking to your best friend or something I think another piece of advice I would have is to not be shy like don't be shy in terms of like reaching out to other creators making friends in the community I feel like there are so many incredible people in the booktube community and I know for me like one of the things that I've valued the most you know with this whole booktube experience was some of the friendships I've been able to make and then as far as the like idea of like posting often and if that will like help your channel grow faster I don't really know if that's the case to be honest I don't know if there's a difference between posting like two to three times a week versus just posting once a week I think instead of posting as often as you can it should be more focused on like the quality of the content that you're putting out because like if you're putting out like say two to three videos a week but they're kind of like half-assed because you're just trying to rush to put out videos I feel like that would show because I feel like quality will always be better over quantity but I know the YouTube algorithm them is also very weird and very unpredictable and it likes for you to be uploading probably at least once a week is my guess like I hear from most people as long as you're uploading once a week the algorithm will be happy with you but at the same time like I wouldn't worry too much about the algorithm because I do think it's more important to be putting out videos that you're proud of as opposed to a video just for the sake of uploading you know what I mean the next questions that I got were about like is there anything you miss about the typical nine to five job do you miss going to the workplace working with other people does it feel overwhelming sometimes do you ever get cabin fever how do you deal with burnout to answer that yes I mean I do miss working with my friends but I don't miss working inside of a restaurant <laughs> I mean I never had the typical nine-to-five job you know like I didn't really have a standard like nine-to-five type of thing I was working in a restaurant so like my schedule was very random I usually would get like Mondays and Wednesdays would be like my days off so I usually never had the weekends off I would be working every single weekend I do miss working with my friends because everybody that I worked with at that restaurant like they've been some of my closest friends they were just like the coolest people to hang out with and so I do do miss getting to you know catch up with them and see them almost like every single day like that's definitely something that I miss but I don't really miss the actual experience of like working in a restaurant I've said it before and I'll say it again that I think restaurant workers and anybody who works in food or retail are some of the most underpaid and underappreciated people working in this country because working in a restaurant is not easy it's actually so stressful especially when you're like management and you're not only having to handle any situations with your employees and the staff but then also the customers making sure everybody's happy dealing with hungry angry people is not a fun time I can tell you that it's not a fun time but I feel like I learned so much from those experiences in my life and especially on the management side it has made me much more of a confident person because I've been able to deal with confrontation a lot better ever since learning you know with through the management but I do miss like going out and like seeing people every day it can feel very lonely like working from home sometimes I do get cabin fever I think anybody who works from home can also agree that it's just inevitable that you're gonna get really bad cabin fever sometimes and you're gonna be like I need to freaking get out of here and I also most definitely do get burnt out it happens I feel like with most jobs when you're doing something full-time you're gonna get burnt out no matter what the job is all right another question that I got is will this always be a book channel or will you incorporate other topics and themes and I do think that at this point in time this is always probably gonna be a booktube channel I think with booktube specifically it can be hard to get out of the booktube shell once it's somewhere that you're in I mean I think with any like niche on YouTube once you find yourself there it can be hard to like branch out and try different things because like of course I would like to incorporate more like movie or TV related content onto this channel or even more like lifestyle like how I do with my monthly vlogs but even that it's like I don't know it's hard sometimes because I feel like if you branch out and do content that's outside of books those videos tend to get a lot less views and a lot less engagement and so it's like why put all this time and effort into doing these things that I know won't perform well on this channel so I do think this channel specifically will always be related to books however I do have other hobbies like I do have an ASMR channel if you didn't know I have a channel that's all dedicated to ASMR because I really like making ASMR videos and then I also do have another channel that's related to music that I actually just started
start it up again because I used to be a really big songwriter in high school and I used to write a lot of music and so I've been uploading some of my original songs over on that other channel. It's called Gabby Sings. And so yeah, I do have other YouTube channels where I do have some other hobbies and things that I do, but I think this channel will always remain a book channel. Another question that I got was what inspired you to start YouTube? And really the only reason why I started this YouTube channel was because I didn't have anybody in my real life who read books and I was starting to read books a lot because I had gotten really obsessed with reading in 2014 after I read Gone Girl and I was just like I need somebody to talk to about these books so I just started making videos just talking about the books that I was reading so that I could find somebody who had read the same books as me who another good question that I got was what do you love and what do you hate about YouTube and so I think for sure the thing that I love the most about YouTube is the sense of community that YouTube has given me. I've met so many of my closest friends in the world because of my YouTube channel and I don't think I ever would have met these people or made these connections if I hadn't started this channel. I also just really love the creative freedom that YouTube has given me because with working for myself like I get to make all of the decisions about like what kind of videos and content that I want to be working on and it just feels so good to get to be creative in the ways that I want to be and not have any like restraints put on me. The thing that I hate the most about YouTube though is the pressure to like stay relevant and to always like one up yourself and constantly be doing better. I feel like I mostly feel this pressure like on myself like not necessarily from my audience but I put this pressure on myself and YouTube studio definitely puts the pressure on you you know and they'll be like comparing your last video to your last 10 and if your video is not doing that well YouTube will be like hey just so you know your video is flopping and it can just be a little bit intense sometimes like I don't know it can definitely take a toll on your mental health when you feel like oh my gosh like I'm slipping with views and I'm not relevant anymore. I think that can definitely be something that really can take it out of you as a creator so that's definitely my least favorite part about YouTube and then I also hate the pressure in a way with like YouTube and like what I'm reading specifically and how I'll sometimes feel pressured into reading a certain genre or not reading a certain genre because of the content that I'm trying to make. Like say for example like if I want to read manga I know that like most of my audience will probably not care about manga and like I could never do a whole video dedicated to manga because it wouldn't get any views you know like nobody would watch that but then it's also like in a way with like say like romance vlogs like I don't know if I'm gonna continue making romance reading vlogs because those videos don't tend to do as well on my channel whereas like reading thriller or horror books are like that is the genre that I am like literally known for now so most of my thriller content ends up being some of my most viewed content which is awesome but it's also like in the back of my mind I'm like okay well I have to do videos that stay within this genre because that's what does well on my channel that's what my audience wants to see and I guess I just hate how it's in a way it's impacted my reading because now all of my content ideas come before whatever I want to read like whatever I want to actually read usually is not the priority for me it's usually what kind of content can I create with this which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just like the way it is right now I did get these two questions that I thought were really interesting they said how do you feel about thousands of people knowing about your personal life and how do you balance what you want to share online versus things you want to keep private and I think that these are actually really great questions because this is something I've really been struggling with more in the last year than I've ever struggled with this on YouTube in my whole life <laughs> sometimes I'll go back and watch the monthly vlogs that I was making in like 2018 and 2019 and I'll just be shocked by the th some of the things that I say and like how vulnerable I am on camera like I was truly convinced in those years that nobody was watching my videos like I was convinced that not a single soul was watching those except for me so it was almost like I was using those as like a video diary you know like I would just like get out all of my feelings and talk about everything that was going on in my life and I feel like especially in this last year it's just been so eye-opening to me with like what I should be sharing online and what I shouldn't be at least when it comes to like privacy with my life and privacy with like my vulnerability and feelings because I think I was even talking about in my last Q&A that I did like this I was saying like oh well you have to have really thick skin to be a content creator because like there's just gonna be people talking shit about you and hating on you all the time and you just have to like let it roll off your back and I do still think uh, for the most part I'm able to let it like roll off my back because it does happen all the time I don't know why for some reason this year in particular has been really hard for me to like deal with that mentally and so I've definitely held back a lot more when it comes to my privacy and not sharing things as much as I used to and that's why I do think in a lot of ways I'm so grateful for like my little community of people on patreon because I do feel more comfortable expressing myself over there sometimes I don't know why like YouTube as a whole can feel very scary and very intimidating but for some reason when it's just like my little patreon community I just feel so much more comfortable sharing things Ooh, another comment that I got is are you planning to enter college and study media or journalism so as of right now I don't have any plans to go back to college um, if you didn't know I actually I did go to college I dropped out in my third year I was going to college for an English degree in creative
creative writing at the time. And the only reason why I ended up dropping out at the time was because I was getting more opportunities at my job. And so I decided to put all of my time and effort into being a restaurant manager instead of going to college. And I don't really have any regrets there because I feel like everything worked out the way that it was supposed to. But I also like, I just love learning. I love learning so much. If money wasn't an issue, like if I could just literally go to school for free, I would probably be doing that for sure because I love learning and I love the college campus environment. It is just so inspiring. Oh my gosh, every time that I've gone back on a college campus ever since leaving, it like, oh, it makes my heart just like ignite in my chest and I just want to be back and like be learning. And so if money like was not an issue, I would absolutely love to do that because I do think that education is so important. Ooh, I did get a couple interesting questions that were kind of related to sponsors. Like one of these said, how do you know for sure if a sponsor is a scam or not? Luckily, now that I'm working under Table Rock, this is not something that I have to really worry about as much as I used to because I'm lucky enough that now Table Rock as my management, like they are the ones going out there and trying to find sponsors for me. So I don't have to like reach out to brands that I'm not sure about anymore. But I think the best way to know if a brand is a scam or not is to do your research, which is something that I totally recommend doing obviously for any brand that you're gonna be working with. You wanna be looking them up. Another question that I had was, have you ever had to say no to a sponsor? And yes, actually so many times, definitely had to say no to sponsors and brands before because I'm not just accepting every single sponsorship that comes my way. I think at the end of the day, the most important thing for me is that I'm taking on sponsors for brands that like I would be a customer of because I would only work with brands that I actually have tried and use their products and believe in their products. Ooh, the next question says, how do you plan out each video? Which is another question that I really love. One of the things that helps me the most with planning my video content is that I have a notes app in my phone where I just have a whole list of like all of the ideas that I wanna do. And I basically just start listing out the ideas under different months. So say for like next year, I already have a bullet point for like the month of January. And then these are all the videos that I wanna be working on in the month of January. I just just give myself like a rough timeline of like about 10-ish video ideas per month, which includes like most of the time that includes like my TBR or my wrap ups or like book calls or some videos that are more like staples on my channel. But I try to plan out the reading vlogs for each month in advance. Like sometimes it doesn't always happen. Like a lot of times I'm always like scrapping ideas last minute or like changing plans to fit into what I'm trying to do better. But for the most part, I like planning things out a few months in advance. Like I'm the kind of person that I'll probably be planning stuff out about six months ahead. But any further than that, sometimes I have difficulty when it comes to planning content content like that far out. All right, and then one of the questions that I got asked the most often was questions relating to like, does reading ever feel like a chore now that it's your job? Does it ever take the fun out of reading or have your feelings changed towards reading ever since doing this full time? And I think my answer would be yes, my love for reading has changed a little bit ever since doing this full time. Like just to be fully transparent and honest, I think it's more so in a way of like, you know how I mentioned earlier where like my content schedule will come before what I want to read. So like I'm not as as much of a mood reader, I guess, as I used to be. Like, back when I was first starting on YouTube, I just used to let myself like read whatever I wanted to read and like that's just how it was. But now that I'm doing YouTube full time, I'm more focused on like what kind of books can I fit into certain content ideas? And that comes first as a priority for me over whatever I want to read. I think especially like earlier this year in particular, like I was really struggling for a while there. Like there was a few months at the beginning of this year where I was just feeling so unmotivated and like I just didn't want to read. And that was like the first time in my life or at least in my time on YouTube that I've ever had those feelings. And I was getting really nervous because I was like, oh my God, like if I just don't feel like I want to be reading anymore then like my passion is gone and like what am I supposed to do and then luckily you know it was around the month of October this year that all of a sudden it was like I just fell back in love with reading all over again I don't know exactly what happened or what turned around or what changed in me but like in the month of October I just completely fell back in love with reading and so I'm so glad to know that that can still happen for me like even though I've been doing this full-time for two years now yeah there might be a few months where I'm feeling a little bit less motivated than normal but then I can fall back in love with reading at any time. I guess what I'm trying to say is even though I feel like I've I lost my way there for a little bit like there were definitely a few months where I was feeling a little bit less passionate about reading and so at times it did feel more like a job like reading did feel more like a job in that sense but now I'm really glad that I've gotten back into the state of mind where like I'm in love with reading again I'm excited to pick up books again. I just think I hit a point of burnout that I ignored for too long with YouTube and then it just made me like not really want to read or I couldn't find myself in the mood 
able to read for such a long period of time and that was really affecting me like mentally earlier this year but I don't know I'm really glad that everything has worked out and that I'm definitely back in the mood for reading again it feels so good to be like excited about reading again because for a while there I was like oh my god like what's wrong with me and then the last questions that I had for this that I thought these questions would be great to end it on is where do you see your channel in two more years and can you see yourself doing YouTube for the rest of your life and to answer those questions I don't think that I'll be doing YouTube for the rest of my life I just don't see that happening I mean to be fair I don't really know what my future looks like on YouTube especially like in two years I mean in two years sure I would love to be still doing this in two years I would love to still be doing YouTube in the next like five to ten years potentially I mean I just don't really know where my future is gonna take me I try not to think like that far in the future like I'm the kind of person that is comfortable thinking like one or two years ahead any more than that and I start to get like locked down paralyzed with fear like I don't know I'm gonna be turning 29 next month which is just crazy to think about so like if I could still be doing YouTube into my 30s I would be so happy and so grateful for that I just don't know if YouTube is something that I can realistically do full-time forever you know like because there's only been so many people that have done YouTube full-time as a career in the last years like YouTube is a relatively new thing I feel like with this I'm really just taking it all one day at a time like I don't even know if mentally I can handle doing YouTube full-time for the rest of my life like I don't know I'm just kind of taking this day by day seeing how it goes so far it's been a really fun ride and I've just had so many incredible experiences because of my YouTube channel so with that being said I think that's gonna be a wrap on this Q&A thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your questions thank you so much for your love and support over these last two years of doing YouTube full-time I can't believe that I'm lucky enough to still be doing this I literally couldn't have done it without you and your support so thank you so much and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us so thank you so much for watching today thank you for hanging out with me I really appreciate it and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!